Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about slope intercept form. Okay, so um, the slope intercept form of an equation is an equation that's written so that it's solved for y. And so on the other side of the equation, oftentimes y is on the left hand side, but it could also be on the right hand side. Um, because remember the, um, the symmetric property says that you can flip things around the equal to sign. Um, it's solved for y, and it has um, the characteristics on the right-hand side where you have the term with the x, and it has a coefficient to it, and then you have the constant term at the back of the um, equation. So when it's solved in this form, this coefficient to the x is the slope, or the rate of change, and um, this constant right here is the y-intercept, or the initial value. Okay. Now, the explanation for this is, um, okay, so the reason why this constant is the y-intercept is because, remember, the y-intercept is the value when x is equal to 0. So it's the y-value when x is equal to 0. So in this equation, if you put 0 in for x, you'd have y is equal to 3 times 0 plus 8, or just 8. So that's why the constant right here ends up being the y-intercept. Because um, the when you put when you substitute zero in for x, you're just left with this constant because this term gets knocked out. Okay. Now the slope is how much um, the x is changing according. Um, it's the ratio of rise to run. So this coefficient in the front here is the slope because if you choose a couple points. So here, um, if I look at the y-intercept, that's eight. So that means um, zero, eight is a point. If I look at the x-intercept. That is the, um, the value when y is equal to 0. So if I solve for this right here, I'd get right here, um, 3x is equal to negative 8. Divide by 3, divide by 3. We have x is equal to negative 8 thirds. So we know that negative 8 thirds and um, 0 is another point. Now if I were to find the slope using these two points, um, we'd have um, so the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you could go 8 minus 0 over 0 minus negative 8 thirds. So you'd have 8 divided by 8 thirds, essentially. Well, 8 divided by 8 thirds, you can go keep, change, and then reciprocate here. Well, basically, when you uh, multiply it out, you just get 3. So the slope is equal to 3. What was that? That was the coefficient. Okay, um, so this is the nice part about this formula, so that when it's solved for y, the coefficient to the x is equal to, now remember, solve for y means that the coefficient of y is 1. If you had a coefficient that was something other than 1, you'd have to divide both sides of the equation, like the entire right side and the entire left side, by whatever the coefficient to y is. But if the coefficient to y starts out as 1, then we say that it's in slope-intercept form, and that this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. Okay. Now, it's very easy to graph when um, an equation is in slope-intercept form because it's easy to pick off the slope and the y-intercept. Now, again, remember, we're using function notation here, and you should be able to go back and forth between function notation and y notation. So remember, f of x is equal to y. So this is the same thing as saying y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 1. Okay. So in this case, the y-intercept is equal to negative 1, and the slope is 2 thirds. So this is how you graph using um, the slope intercept. First you plot, um, step number one is you plot the y-intercept. So it's negative 1, so I'm going to plot that on the y-axis. Step number two is to use the slope to find more points. Now the slope is uh, 2 over 3, so that means that there's a rise of 2 and a run of 3. So that means there's a rise of positive 2, so it means it goes up 2, and a run of positive 3, so it means it goes right 3. So we can go up 1, 2, and right 1, 2, 3, and here's another point here. I can do that again, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and there's another point. Notice between these two points, this point and this point, it's a rise of 4 and a run of 6. Remember, and that's because 4 over 6 is equal to 2 thirds. So um, to get a point um, that's not as close to the first point that you got, you can always make an equivalent fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number, and then you get a point that's further away. 
Okay, so it's equivalently, they're all in the same line because two over, uh, four over six is the same as two over three. Also remember that two over, th two over three is the same thing as negative two over negative three. So another thing that I could have done is from the original point here, the original y-intercept, I could have dropped, um, this means down two and left three, right? So a negative rise is equivalent to, um, to going in a negative uh, vertical direction and a negative run is equivalent to going in a negative horizontal direction, which is left. Right, so I go and go one, two, and one, two, three, and that gets a point that's um, down and to the left. So one, two, one, two, three. Notice that all these points are collinear. So even if I drop down by four and left by six, I'm gonna get a point on the same line here. Now when you graph, remember that you draw the line between the points, okay? You draw it as long as you possibly can. You put the arrowheads on it, and you also um, put the equation on it. Okay, so here I've graphed the line using slope-intercept. That's why it's so nice to have slope-intercept form, by the way, is because it's very easy to graph. You plot the y-intercept and you use the slope to get other points here. Okay, if you were to be asked the domain and range, which is this question right here, what is the domain and range? Well, for a standard linear function, remember domain is all the possible x values that you are allowed to put into this function. Well, whenever you are asked the domain, the first thing you want to figure out is, is are there any restrictions to the values of x that I can put in here? Are there any numbers that when I put in for x, I substitute in for x, it makes the thing undefined? And the answer is, for this one, no. That I can put in any values of x, rational or irrational, and it's okay because I can always multiply this by two-thirds and subtract one from it. Okay, um, you would have restrictions if x were in the denominator of a function, uh, if it, sorry, denominator of a fraction, um, you'd have some restrictions uh, with the range if you have a squared, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. But for now, linear functions, for the most part, you are allowed to put in all real numbers. We've talked about real numbers before. That's rational and irrational numbers. And there's actually a notation for all real numbers. And it's like a bolded R, which is an R with like um, two lines on for the left side. So I know, instead of saying all real numbers, you can also put this bolded R. Okay. Now the range is all the numbers that pop out of the, um, the function here. So given that the domain is any number that you can, you know, any real number, what is the range? Well, th think, about, think about in terms of the, um, the y values on your graph. Are there any y values that, you aren't go that this line isn't going to be able to get to? And the answer is no. This thing is, is gonna have, it's going to be able to get all positive or all real numbers for the y values. So that means that any of the points on this line, if I were to uh, zoom in, I would be able to get any of these y, and these points are gonna have every single y value um, that represents the, uh, every number on the uh, y axis. So your range is all real numbers. So I can put in any number out here for x, and I can achieve any number here for y, which means I can, any real number can be popped out of y. So the domain and range are the same. That means all real numbers. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to go ahead and graph it again. This is the, um, this right here means that it has a y-intercept of 4. Now, the uh, slope is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to turn, and that's only, a, um, this isn't a ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a ratio by putting it over 1. And so negative 3 over 1 means it goes down 3. And positive 1 means it goes right 1. Okay. Now this is equivalent, negative 3 over 1 is equivalent to 3 over negative 1. Because if I divided both of these, I would get negative 3. So this is also equivalent to going up 3 and left 1. So from here I can go... Uh, well, actually, going up three and left one, I can't really do for this graph. So it's it's nice that I have a, an alternate here. I can go down three, one, two, three, and right one. I can go down one, two, three, and right one, one, two, three, and right one, and that's as many as I can fit on here. Now um, I'm going to draw the line in between, and I'm going to notice that. Oops. I'm going to notice that my um, my line is decreasing. Um, and that makes sense because my slope is negative, all right? And I'm going to write f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 4 here, 
Okay. Now, my domain and range are going to be the same as my last function. I can put in any number. There's no restriction of the x I can put in here. So it's all real numbers. And I can achieve any number out for y. So it's all real numbers. Like, the, the line doesn't stop anywhere. All right. Um, if you had a word problem that said that, like, you can only have a certain value for y, then you'd have a more interesting range where it would um, be restricted on some, some values of y. But for just graphing linear functions, generally the domain and range are always going to be all real numbers. Okay, now we have a word problem. So it's a little bit more interesting because the domain and range are going to be a little bit different. Um, a pitcher with a maximum capacity of four cups, so this is the maximum capacity of the pitcher, so if you see here, it only holds four cups, contains one cup of apple juice concentrate. So it already starts with one cup of apple juice, so maybe this is one cup right here in the pitcher. A faucet is turned on, filling the pitcher at a rate of 0.25 cups per second. The amount of liquid in the, if the amount of liquid in the pitcher is A of T in cups is a function of time, oh, oh they want us to write this, the amount of... They want us to give a function a of t in cups as a function of the time in seconds that the water is running. Okay, so the amount t is equal to, well, it starts with one cup of apple juice. So that's, oh, sorry, it starts, no, that's right. It starts with one cup of apple juice and it goes, so my slope is 0 0.25 um, for every time, for every time in seconds, but it starts at one uh, with one cup of apple juice concentrate, okay? So if I were to graph this, I would go up by one. Now, uh, 0 0.25 is one over four. So I can go, so it's either 0 0.25 over one, so it's half a cup every one second, or that's equivalent to one cup every four seconds, right? Um, so I can also use that. It's a little easier to do one over four. So, here, whoops. Um, it has a rise of one and a run of four. So a rise of one and a run of one, two, three, four. Okay, a rise of one and a run of one, two. And you know what? Um, I actually can only go up to four cups. So a rise of one and a run of one, two, three, four. And that's actually going to go to eight, right here, eight seconds. And um, what I should be able to do is, let's see if I can push this over. It actually should, I should have a graph that goes out to uh, 12, I believe that is, because at 12 seconds, I'm gonna have the maximum capacity of four cups. So this is gonna be a rise of one and a run of four here. So this is my function, and I actually should not have arrowheads on my function because um, the, the maximum capacity is, they told us four cups. So at eight seconds, it's, um, there are four cups in there, oops four cups of liquid in there. So we graph the function a of t. Let's write this um, a of t down. a of t is equal to 0 0.25 times t plus 1. And write the rule, for, uh, that's the rule for the function, and state its domain and range. Okay, so this is going to be a more interesting domain and range. Um, our domain is going to be all the values that I can put in here. Okay, so th those are all the seconds that I can put in here. Well, the seconds are going to be, um, it's only going to go up to 12 seconds because after that, the, the pitcher's going to be full. Um, so it's going to start at 0 and go to 12. So um, we're going to write this as, um, we want to write it as a range. So x can be between 12, it's less than or equal to 12, and less than or equal to 0. Uh, or, you know what, let's write this as t instead of x. So t can be between 0 and 12 and include those values of 0 and 12. Now my range is all the possible y values. So here, my range is, if I were to draw like a, um, a dashed line, it's all the y values that the, um, that the function can achieve. And that's, what are the y values? It's the amount in uh, cups that they can achieve. So it only really goes between one and four cups because it starts at one cup and it overfills at four cups or it starts to overflow at four cups. So it's going to be cups um, anywhere between uh, four cups and greater than or equal to one cup. Okay, so this is a little bit more interesting for our domain and range because um, we have some parameters here, which is often the case when you have a word problem, right? And finally, one more thing is converting between standard and slope intercepts. So method number one, um, if you're giving it to you in standard and you have to find slope intercept, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Method number one is to find the y-intercept and the slope. And that's easy when you have, uh, 
when you know what the um, what the intercepts are. So the y, remember the y intercept is you put your you pretend like this isn't there and you solve it for this. You solve it for y. So the y int is going to be 10 divided by 5, which is 2. The x-intercept is going to be um, the other way around, where you put your finger over this one, and you solve it for x, which is going to be 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so um, you can find the slope by getting the points out. y-intercept is 0, 2. x-intercept represents the point 5, 0. You can find the point quickly by doing this which is 2 over negative 5. So your slope is negative 2 fifths. Um, and your y-intercept is 2. So here you can say y is equal to negative 2 fifths x plus 2, because that's your slope and that's your y-intercept. Um, alternately, you could write it in f of x notation if you want. Whoops. That's fifths. So it's negative 2 fifths x uh, plus 2. Okay, so there's two different ways you can write it. Um, method number two is just to solve it for y. So I can subtract 2x from both sides, get it all on one side, 5y is equal to, and I'm going to sort of flip these around because I could write it as 10 minus 2x, or I could just rewrite it as negative 2 plus 10. So I have negative 2x plus 10 rather. Whoops. And then since I want the coefficient of y to be 1, I'm going to divide each side by 5. Now, you have to be a little careful when you divide the right side by 5. When you have an expression like this on the top and you divide it by 5, you have to take each part of the expression and divide it by 5. Okay, so notice I split the expression up into its parts and I divided each side by 5. Well, negative 2x over 5 is actually just negative 2 fifths x because I can pull that x on the side of it. Um, plus and 5 divided by uh, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So it comes up with the same thing. Either way you want to do it, it's fine. If, if you do it this way and you're asked to represent it in f of x notation, then just go ahead in the last step and express it um, with f of x instead of y. Okay, and that's the end of the lesson for today.